So in this clip, I'm going to briefly go through the forecasting for AR models and later MA models. So let's say we have an ARP model as this one. And um, we estimate, we use data. Use data, let's say yt, where t goes from 1 to capital T. Okay. Or, Actually, I used N in the lecture notes, up to N, to estimate parameters. Estimate the parameters. Now, we talked about how to do that in the case of AR models. That's just an OLS regression. So it means, really, our estimated relationship is going to be yt is equal to alpha hat plus phi 1 hat y t minus 1 plus phi 2 hat y t minus 2. Oh, let's see, there's a, there's a mistake. This should be a 2. I have to change that in the lecture note as well. So t minus 2 all the way to phi p y t minus p plus epsilon. T. So I'm here, that's a hat. So the question is now, what do we do for forecasting? So we want to forecast observation by n. Well, by n we have, we use that for observation. So let's say we want to forecast one step ahead, y n plus 1. That means we want the expectation of y n plus 1. But now we want the expectation conditional on having all observations up to time n available. So in the lecture note notation, this was a capital N, this was a, a little n. So I'll use this to say capital N. Now, is that going to be the same as the unconditional expectation of my n plus 1? Question mark. Well, I talked a bit about this in the lecture. We know for a stationary process, this guy is constant. That means if there wasn't a difference, we would say we would always forecast the same. And that means it doesn't, in that case, it wouldn't really matter what the last observations or the observations up to time n were. In most cases, this is not going to be the, the case. In most cases, there will be useful information in y, yn. Okay, so therefore, in general, this is not the same. So we want the conditional expectation of y n plus 1. So what we need to do is we will basically repeat what we have on the left-hand side, so the expected value and that will then be conditional on y n, but we'll replace the y n plus one with the estimated with this estimated process. Okay. It just disappeared off the screen with this estimated process. We just need to be careful with the uh, timing. So y n plus one is the same as alpha hat plus phi 1 hat, and now the predecessor observation to n plus 1 is y n. Okay, so that's 1 lag to n plus 1 plus phi 2 hat. Now, two observations prior to n plus 1 is y n minus 1. I should say this was capital N, right? Information set at time n. And all sorts of lags up to phi hat. And now p legs of n plus 1 is y n minus p but plus 1. Okay, you can try and figure, put numbers in there to confirm that. Plus epsilon t plus 1. So, now two things. Firstly, we need to recall what is in here. In y n, are all the observations available at time n. So n, n minus 1, n minus 2, 
and so forth, all past observations. That means available, which values here are available. We are taking expectations of our random variables. So we'll have to figure out with information available time n what is really a random variable. So let's see what do we have. All the blue ticks is we have that available. Well, we have estimates of alpha of all the coefficients actually. So these are not random variables. Well, they are random variables, but we use the estimated values for our estimation. Now, what about the yn? yn, that's available here as well. So that's not a random variable anymore. yn minus 1 is available, so that's fine. yn minus p plus 1 is available as well. So all of these blue things can now come out of the expectations operator because at time n we have these guys. Two we had yn minus 1 plus Oh, no, it's a p missing, phi p hat, phi n minus p plus 1. The only thing that's left in the expectations is the error term. Expected value of epsilon t plus 1 given information at um, n. Now, if this guy is, as we usually assume, white noise, then that means the expected value of this is going to be equal to zero. It's unpredictable. So that means all we are left with is the, this entire term here. We can just cancel away. So all we are left with is this guy. And so you can see as I all drew them in blue, all these values are available. We said we had the estimated parameters because we use the data up to n to get these parameter estimates. Okay, and we are just using them down here. And at time n, we have all these observations. So all that you are left with is actually plugging in some numbers. And that's actually done in an exercise. I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to, however, briefly go through the case of making a two-step ahead forecast. Okay, so what do we do if we are now forecasting n plus 2 given observation at time n. Okay, so it's two step ahead because where we have information up to n, we're forecasting n plus 2. So let's firstly write the whole thing again. The same, we'll do the same as we did in this line. So we say alpha hat plus beta 1 hat and now one period lagged of n plus 2 is of course y n plus 1 plus phi 2 hat y n, all sorts of lags up to phi p hat y n minus p plus 2 now, plus 2 plus epsilon t plus 2 and conditional information at time n. So, What now? The information set hasn't changed. We still have, let's use our blue pen again, we still have this information here available. So let's make ticks again. Firstly, all the coefficients, they are available. Then let's start from the back. Y n, y, oh, let's put it like this. We have here a value y n. And it turns out this is the last value we have available. So this is available. All values of y before that that's the ones to the right, are available as well. However, the one that is not available is this guy here. That is not in the information set yn. So we can't, the, the expectations operator will still operate on this one. Of course, the expectation of the error term at t plus 2 given information at n is exactly the same as this one. That is zero again. Okay? We can actually apply this to this one as well. Okay, so therefore what we have is the following. This is equal to alpha or blue for everything we have. Alpha hat can come out again plus 
phi one hat, this constant, this can come out. So basically we have now the expected value phi one hat times phi n plus one, but this one is a constant phi one hat, so it can come out the expectation. And all we are left with here is the expectation of phi n plus one, given the information set at time n. And all the rest, we again have phi two hat phi n plus one dots plus phi hat p by n minus p plus two. Okay, all these blue values are available, either estimated coefficients or available n. What we don't have is this red bit. So if you have the red bit, it would just be a calculation we have to do. Now we are in luck because this guy, of course, is exactly what we calculated here. Okay, this is exactly the same. So once we calculated the one step ahead forecast, we can use the result of this and plug this into this calculation and then we can calculate the two step ahead forecast. And you can try and write down the three step ahead forecast and you will figure out, you'll be able to figure out that we will then be able to do that as long as we calculated the one and two step ahead forecast previously. So we are done. I just need a little correction. I just realized, let's go up here. We had our process equation for the ARP. That was this guy here. And then we had our estimated equation where I replaced the coefficients of the estimated coefficients. But of course, you know, impossibly you've been screaming. That's wrong before. I can't use the unknown error terms. I need to use estimated residuals here. Okay, so I need to use, if I have estimated coefficients, I need the estimated uh, error terms here to make this equality work. So that's all I have to add.